Okay, so here we are back inside Photoshop, and there's only two more things that we need to do inside Photoshop before we can start stepping into Dreamweaver. And the first thing we need to do is, uh, because we're going to create a uh, rollover effect with our mock link uh, navigation bar over here, um, we're going to create those rollovers. So first I'm going to get rid of my guides by hitting Control semicolon. And uh, one other thing I wanted to show you guys, you see I have my gray auto slices in here as well. If I have my slice select tool right here, uh, it gives me a little button up here to hide the auto slices. So if I click that, my auto slices will go away. And then all I have is my user slices. And it just kind of cleans up the document a little bit. It doesn't make it so cluttered. So I'm just going to get rid of those. Alright, so to create our rollover effect, um, basically the way it works for rollover images is you have a normal state or an, an off state or whatever. You know, different people call it different things, whatever you want to call it. Uh, basically, it just means that, you know, in the off state, the mouse is off of the image. Or the normal state, the mouse is not over the image. Then you'll have the over state, which in my case will look something like this. And when the mouse hovers over that particular, in this case, it'll just be the letters and not this entire square. Uh, no, I mean, I'm sorry, it'll be the entire square. You know, so if the mouse comes in and hits right here, then this will turn red. If it comes anywhere else in here, it's going to turn red. And that's the way I want it to be. I don't want it to be just the word. I want it to be these, this, this whole square right here. Uh, and basically what will happen is when the mouse comes in, it hovers over this square, I mean this rectangle, or it, it, you know, it goes on top of it, as some people will say. Then it turns red, and that creates the rollover effect. So the first step is to come into my layer styles for each one of these um, text layers here and turn this satin effect on that I have. And, you know, this isn't, like, a, an amazingly spectacular rollover effect. Uh, but then again, this is an amazingly spectacular web page design layout that I've done here in Photoshop. And it's just a training thing to teach you guys how this works and, you know, the steps that you would go through. And it applies to any web page that you, that you do. Uh, you'll have more complex slicing and more complex, with more complex, you know, designs and layouts in Photoshop. But the principles are still the same and it still applies. Okay. So now that we've turned our roller effect on, what we need to do is rename each of our slices, because if you see, this one's still called home, this one's still called about, you know, and so on and so forth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a standardized naming convention by adding an underscore and the word over. And that's going to indicate my over state. So now I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to copy that. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to come into about, and I'll paste. Oop, get the end there. Paste. Hit OK. Into forms, paste, okay, training, and the underscore over is just, is just a standard naming convention that you'll see uh, all throughout the web. You'll have one one state of your image, uh, like so, and it'll just be you know home underscore off or home underscore normal, something like that. And then you'll have the image with the rollover state applied, and this will be called home underscore over, or home underscore on, you know, depending on how you name your regular state, your normal state. I call them normal and over, it's just, you know, the, the convention that I'm used to. Uh, okay, so we don't need this footer anymore, so I can just delete that. In fact, I'm just going to turn that off, because we're going to turn it off in the future anyway. Uh, we have to create our rollovers, which we're about to do now, so we're going to go File, Save for Web and Devices. And I'm not going to change anything in here. My, my file format is still going to be the same for each. I'm still going to use the GIF file format, which is completely fine. And I just have each one of those slices, so good. And I just hit Save. And there's my Images folder. You see all my normal state images are still here. So I'm just going to hit Save. And now if I bring up Windows Explorer really quick here, you'll see that... Oh, there's nothing here. What is this? Oh, I have another images folder. So Photoshop said, hey, inside the images folder, we're going to put another images folder, and here's all of my images. And I forgot to choose user slices only. Here's my over for about contact form home training. But I've also got all of my uh, auto slices, which I don't need. So I'm going to select those, hit delete on my keyboard, and then I'm going to take these cut them, go back a folder, and paste. And 
think if I go back in here, it's empty. So I can delete this folder, which I don't need anymore. And there we go. Now I've got my about state, my normal state for my about button, my over state for my about button, normal state for contact, over for contact, normal for forum, over for forum, normal for home, over for home, normal for training, and over for training. And that's going to be my rollover buttons. Great, huh? Isn't that awesome? So we're almost there. We just have one more slice to make. And that slice is going to be our background slice. So now I'm going to turn auto slices back on. And basically, I don't need these slices anymore. So I can get rid of them. I'll just delete on the keyboard and get rid of all of those slices. And now you'll see I have one big auto slice. I also don't need these text layers. I can get rid of those. I just want all of this. And this is going to become the background image for my page. Sort of. But you'll see. Uh, so now, uh, this is an auto slice. And I know I can change the name of it, but I really need this to be a user slice. And I can either come over here to my slice tool and just draw it out, or with the slice select tool, I can choose to promote this to a user slice. And there it goes, bam. Instant user slice. And I can double click. I'm going to change the name to background. <coughs> Hit OK. Go final. Save for other devices. And what do I have? A GIF. Blech. Looks bad. All kinds of little dots in here. No good. Let's try JPEG. And let's come here and try Ping24 and see which one comes out looking better. We've got a 60 quality JPEG. And that doesn't look too bad, but there's some stuff along the edge here that I'm not too happy with. You know what? I think I might stick with that, because it's 25K. It's not that bad size, and I'm just doing a tutorial anyway. But, I mean, you guys would obviously, you know, come in here and tweak it to death until you were happy with the image quality as well as the file size. You see my Ping 24s you know, a little bigger, so I'm not going to go with that. I'll go with the JPEG. And then I will click Save, and what I want you to notice is... Of course, there's my footer that I saved earlier, but my file name is called Vector Test. And before we didn't mess with this at all, we let Photoshop use the names that we gave it in the uh, slices dialog box. But in this case, because we only have one slice selected, and even though we named it in the slice options dialog box, we still have to come in here and we're going to have to name this background or you know <clears throat> whatever it is you want to call the file. I lost my dot there. Okay, so it's background.jpg, images only, uh, default settings is fine, and of course, there's only one slice, so I don't get the option of which, you know, set of slices do I want. So I'll just hit save, and it closes out of that, come into um, Windows Explorer, and there you see background.jpg, bam. So now, we have our buttons, we have our background, and we have our footer. And we are ready to rock and roll inside Dreamweaver or our text editor or whatever it is we're going to use to create the page. However, in the Safe Web and Devices dialog box, I showed you guys that you have the option to do HTML and images. And what I'll do is a little side video that you guys can check out on, you know, what it is that Photoshop does when it generates HTML or XHTML. And we'll take a look at, you know, the save as type and the setting types down here uh, in the next video. And if you want to skip that, you can. If you're not really interested in it, that's fine. Uh, you can skip it and just go on to the next one, which we will be in Dreamweaver, getting ready to lay out our web page. And I'll show you guys some basic CSS and some XHTML and all kinds of fun stuff like that to really like. Okay? So, uh, see you guys soon.